All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, we've got quite the big card going down in Calgary, Alberta. Unified MMA 44 coming through on May 6th. And one bout that's catching my eye for sure is Tom O'Connor and John Wynn. And very happy to be speaking with Tom O'Connor once again. How's your day going so far there, man? It's going great. Thank you for having me on. It's a great day. It's really nice here in Lethbridge today, so yeah. Yeah, you got the weather uh, in your favor there. It's a beautiful day kind of thing. You're getting out and about, spring settling in a little bit. Yeah, it definitely. It feels good. that the, it's, the weather's starting to shift. Perfect timing. You know, starting to get close. It feels May is right around the corner. And, uh, yeah, excited for the fight. So uh, May is the big month for me this year. I'm excited for it. So, yeah. Yeah, and you're always diligently, you know, practicing your skills as a martial artist, so not like any kind of break in that sort of sense. But I imagine there's an eagerness getting back out of there just with this being, you know, just shy over a year away from the cage once you get out there for this next one. So can you talk about the excitement factor getting back out there to compete here? Yeah, for sure. And I really am excited to, like, as part of I want to get more, I want to be more active in this next year. That's one of my goals is a lot more activity, so... It's perfect, kind of one year removed, right around, coming up quick, and I'm excited just, yeah, like you said, the, the span before this with COVID, everything going on, like, kind of crazy getting around, and I did a few, you know, fights in the States and travel, and now this one, a home, not a hometown, you know, John is a hometown kid, but local, and I get to have, you know, friends and family, and it's just that, I'm most excited for that energy, but also just getting back in there getting back to fight and good opponent in john it's gonna be a wicked card the entire card is stacked and me and john i know our fight is going to be it's it can't not be exciting you know the matchup is super exciting so i'm definitely just stoked to get back in there yeah and from what you're saying and describing this bout here it seems like there's definitely that level of familiarity with your opponent here like what excites you about this fight for sure like i mean i know both of you guys are exciting but from your perspectives like where's the excitement coming from there yeah I, the excitement i'm just first of all just you know getting back in there getting competitive in this time and like you know starting to, i can feel too getting a fight for unified and these big organizations that are getting a lot of um, a lot of notice and you know good airtime as well. The reach is improving too. So just the, I'm excited that I can tell that I'm leveling up, and that's going to come with the good good opponents and exciting matchups, which it just excites me. Like I, that's why I do this sport is to have fun and challenge myself and push myself and see what I can do. And uh, I want to fight the best. I've always said that. That's what this is. So I'm excited. He's on a bit of a tear. I'm on a bit of a tear. So the matchup is exciting. The event being in Calgary, being local is exciting. And just getting back in there and getting to fight it all. Like it, it, all around, just a really good energy, really good vibe for this fight. It's the thing, the one thing I'm most excited for just has to be being in the building during the fight with that energy, I know that it's going to be an electric building because I, when I fought, I've only fought once locally and it was in Lethbridge and the energy in that building was insane. Like I couldn't, I couldn't describe it. And so I'm just excited to yeah, feel that run, get to the cage, get in there and feel that energy again. Yeah, for sure. And like we've, you know, talked in past about that Lethbridge fight too. And I got to be there and just, yeah, there was definitely a fervor and a certain energy there. And you were kind of saying before, like John is like technically the local guy in a sense, but there's going to be a strong localized presence for you, I would think, with a lot of people being in the crowd. Do you think there's going to be a strong fervor in the crowd? Like maybe not tantamount to Lethbridge because it's not a purely like hometown sort of outing, but I imagine Lethbridge will be showing out a fair bit and probably Fort McLeod and all that. I'm expecting, I'm expecting it to be the takeover. Like, I think it's just going to be uh, like friends and family there. Like it's just <laughs> going to be O'Connor fans, but of course it's not. Of course it's going to be a fans from all over, but the, I just am expecting, you know, Lethbridge to show up and just there's so many, like this Southern Alberta, all these small towns surrounding. I got also, I'm excited just, for everyone out there, but even like John's family and friends, like that's going to add another energy to this, you know, Southern Alberta fights, like, let's go, you know, I haven't gotten many of them. So I, I can just tell it's going to be electric and I know that Lethbridge is going to show up for sure. So yeah, I'm uh, expecting it to be just a bunch of monkey brain shirts. <laughs> just spread through the 
the crowd with uh, the kids pounding on their chest. That's my that's my goal. Are right, you getting me fired up? You're giving me memories back to around that time and everything like that. Summer of 2017 there, but it's a great mindset you have with this sport too. Like I was seeing, like after you had that you know injury around the Craig Shintani fight, like circa December there, like you were had, having that post there where you were basically saying like oh if you have like a certain part of your body that's injured you can work other parts of your body if you're you know too fatigued that day you can work your mind just can you speak to i guess how much of a benefit that sort of mindset is because it seems like a very like gratitude oriented kind of mindset and just adapting a fair bit yeah i'm like first of all so grateful to people that i'm surrounded by because this constantly reinforced with that and just that growth mindset of always getting better, always moving forward. And that goes so, it applies so well to martial arts, but also just life in general. But for me, with it applying to martial arts is like that, that that's what I'm passionate about now. Me fighting and learning and training martial arts is, it, I didn't expect it, but it's just, you know, something I found and now is my life and my passion. So in regards to that, it's like, it just you can con- there's always something you can work on right whether we can always be improving and that should be our goal if something is holding us back here then there should be another road another door to enter and work on ourselves and improve ourselves and that comes from the people I'm surrounded by working at hard training with Trevor Hardy like he really reinforces that growth mindset there's we he is, you know the great saying of success is time used effectively we all get 24 hours in a day and what you do at that time is going to be whether you're successful or not with what you want to get done, right? With the goals you want to accomplish, how do you spend your time? And so that was a big one with the injury. That was like, you know, I wanted to just sit back and be be depressed and be down. And, you know, that's just what the initial is, is like you're bummed out because everything you're working for, all these things are holding you back. But when you look at it that way, you're going you're gonna to be stuck. So it, it just the mindset of, you know, being grateful for what I have and the opportunities I do have, which are tremendous. The people I have and surrounded by, like, tremendous. So how do I get better? What is it? Okay, maybe injured, I can't do this. But I can do something else to get better. And, yeah, so the people around me kind of instilled that mindset in me. And, like, same thing I've said, my, my parents, the hard work, you know, be compassionate to others, those types of things, and kind of live being grateful for what you have. And, working hard no matter what, wherever you come from. So that's kind of the mindset there. And it was a test at that time, but a good test to him, to work on and practice the mindset, which, you know, and of course, not always easy, but that's the perfect opportunity to work on and improve that type of mindset where you're always getting better. Yeah, and that's an awesome way to look at it. Like you said, definitely that broader kind of utility just for life in general. But you're talking about some of the strength and conditioning work you've been able to get i imagine you're probably working with like the same kind of compatriots out there probably like you know connor Derry, colton menzak brad wall guys like that is that kind of the general layout there and then also still cross training at cmc as well as pfa yeah yeah i'm like full-time at pfa and so i'm there all the time but i need like the guys from cmc have been helping me out a ton as well um i have a few friends like Matt Krako from Dynamic MMA, they've invited me out just to get some more rounds with guys, uh, you know, elite, real, real in-depth, like MMA fighters, guys that are wanting to compete and compete at that level where you can push yourself, but also make sure you're you're going to be getting better and not getting hurt and just training around that good mindset. Same thing, the growth mindset, make sure we're improving. And so I've been really lucky that Dynamic's been able to do some reps with me, Jordan, me, uh, Clay Davidson, some other guys from CMC that Tim Tamaki, Spencer Obi, they all can help. They all help me out a ton. And then, of course, all the PFA guys, the uh, PFA team, everyone at PFA is always helping me out. Lots of reps. Anyone I put in the message group, well, reps at this time, there's always going to be someone to just even do, you know, do some reps of a submission or rep, just enter a takedown, enter a takedown over and over. And they're willing to do that, even if they're. A kickboxer like Cody Jerome, I'm able to get a lot of a lot of reps with him, and he'll let me take him down. He's like, I, he doesn't he doesn't want to take me down, but he'll let me take him down. And so, yeah, everyone, yeah, the team is really good, but able to get up to dynamic MMA. So I have to give them a shout. I appreciate them working with me as well. 
yeah, a lot of great individuals out there. And I imagine there's a benefit to working with someone like Matt Krako, just in the sense of like both of you are trending towards your individual bouts on the same card there. Like as much as MMA is an individual sport in the vacuum of the competition, like it seems like there's that momentum when there's like a team kind of dynamic, like different guys vying for the same goal on the same night. Yeah, you know, when the night lines up at the same time and you're trying to peak everything at the same time, that does work really well, right? Sometimes you have guys, competitions that are overlapping that, you know, one person might be starting to slow down and not be doing hard reps right when the other person is trying to do hard reps. So that has messed with it a bit, but with Matt, it's been really good timing-wise. But also, dude, that guy's a gangster. Like he's, And also a wealth of knowledge. So he has a ton of MMA knowledge and it's been, yeah, it's been a lot of fun repping with them. Same mindset, too. Like, how are we going to get better? Today, how do we get better? Bottom line. And so that's been really good in keeping that mentality, not getting hurt, but getting better. And so, yeah, I really good working with those guys. Yeah, and similar kind of body type, too. I mean, like a touch bigger, but around like the same kind of range there. And kind of to that point, like the last couple being lightweight affairs there and then getting back to featherweight for this one like it never seemed like you put featherweight behind you in general it seemed like you always had like the desire to still want to fight 145 at different points but what's it feeling like in this particular camp leading up to a featherweight foray this time out yeah it feels good like with my last fight being 155 that i i you got the cut down it was really good and just getting back in the same thing like you know when you're not active regularly enough and like a fight a year ago those little things you find i find that when you're active enough with the fight and competing, those get dialed in. And so just even my last fight, the cut was really good. And I feel like that 155 fight was really good to help me transition now back to 145 for this fight. So I feel good. Yeah, it feels really strong still, still training hard and uh, not slowing down waist going down. I feel, yeah, really at a good point for, for this one, testing to get back to 145. I'm a bit bigger still, um, holding on to some strip, some weight still. At, from that 155 size, especially because that last opponent, DeMonte, is like really big. So I tried to do a big strength and conditioning protocol for that. And yeah, it feels good going back down. And I, I like both weight classes. I'm not going to shut the door on either at any point. I guess that kind of leads into my next question too, because you were talking about wanting to stay active this year. Like it seems like you want to take like at least like three fights around that. Would you be kind of going back and forth between weight categories you think or would the pursuit be to like stick it out to maybe say the featherweight division and then keep adding to that gold there because you had that xffc featherweight title i would think that the unified featherweight title would maybe be in your crosshairs down the line yeah absolutely i definitely i, I want to stay i want to fight at 145 and and you know dominate there or try and really you know put my stamp on that division for a while and just get get strong, be really strong down there, but also get that cut down. And, um, but I, yeah, I, being active, like I'm not taking away any chances at 155 either. I'm going to be looking for fights in like you said, three, I want three this year. So yeah, I, uh, I think I'm, I'm not going to close the door on either. And it's such a crazy sport. We'll see what happens. Right. It's, I got the, uh, the fight contract with unified. So I'll get more opportunity there and, staying and fighting for that unified title is the goal taking that so 145 i gotta be in that division but if there's an opportunity at 155 i you know who knows be ready for anything in this in this crazy sport yeah for sure i mean you were supposed to fight you know jesse arnett on this card and that got switched up too so it seems like adaptability is key yeah absolutely like in again back to in life and in this sport but like mma as we all know what a crazy sport that's why it's so exciting that's why it's the best sport on on the planet and it's just like anything can happen and being adaptable is just gonna help you prepare for that better too like i think sometimes i i think of that lately as, you know sometimes a fight gets canceled this happens we see it all the time but on one side some people will make a bigger deal than others and I get on one side of it making you know making money, making a lot of noise, and how that could be uh, a beneficial thing for someone if that's the the style they go with, where they you know make noise about it. But otherwise, it's like that really is just part of the game. Be prepared, be adaptable. I want to fight the best. I want to fight people who challenge me. That's my goal. And so if it gets if the opponent gets switched, that's that's part of the sport. Be adaptable, be ready to go, 
And I, I like same thing with training for a certain camp. Is the more detail oriented you can be, the better you can prepare and the better you can do on fight night. So I, that is super important. But I think there's also an element for me where I want to present the best version of me. Period. When I come into fight night, when I'm there on May six, that's going to be the best version that you've seen of Tom Big Nasty O'Connor yet. And that's what I prepare to do for every fight. So I got to prepare for my opponent, but. At the end of the day, I'm trying to bring the best version of me, the martial art that I represent, and oh, that that's got to be enough. That's the end of it. It's got it's got to be enough to do the job. Otherwise, that, that challenge is going to have to learn have to learn lessons, right? And so, I think that when the adaptability is something that could be used and valued a lot more in a lot of people's mindset. Yeah, for sure. And I love the analysis, like extending from, you know, what you do in competition to also just like the general fandom of the sport. Like I was seeing you were doing a few big like fight prediction videos as of late with like the MMA I project. Can you kind of talk about that and just how much you've been enjoying kind of doing that, like wearing the analyst hat in a proverbial sense? Yeah, again, that's the area I'm, you know, as white belt as it gets and still the nerves for that is I get you know, nervous for all that, but it's a lot of fun, and I really love it. Another element is, like, I watch all the fights, I study all the fights, I have fun watching fights and just being in that world. So I really enjoy it, and I'm, I've am i noticed over the, a couple times that it is improving, you know? I get a little more confident, and so, it's, yeah, I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun doing those, too. Yeah, it really comes across in the videos, man, and that's a – great mentality to have i feel like you have a white belt mentality in mma too though like you're always trying to improve and stuff like that like the analyst videos definitely come off to me in the sense of like incremental progression between each of them but good to have that growth kind of mindset right absolutely and i think too like it's, it's the more you're involved in it you're looking at it from different angles you look at it from an analyst angle same thing when i started teaching jujitsu or you know teaching class kickboxing class is that gives you another another window to look at this through and solve those problems through because you're having to present it in a different way. Same thing with the analyst. Like, just you know, the words you use, the under, you have to have a deeper understanding of it because you're looking at it from another angle. And so that is one thing that I love about it. That growth goes back to the growth mindset, right? It's just, you know, taking it all in. But also just how much fun it is, right? Like, you're watching the fights and, be, and just being a part of it and not having to be in the... the you have to prepare for it still and prepare you want to do good, but not in the fight. I'm not going in the fight. I'm just analyzing it and just having fun with it. Like I love seeing the guys, like even you, like seeing you guys when you're doing it and when someone does it good, man, it's, it's definitely good to watch. Yeah, no doubt. So many cool facets to the mixed martial arts culture and stuff like that. And I always enjoy getting to talk to you about those kind of things for sure. But I also do want to be, mindful of your time here tom so to that point is there maybe anything you might want to add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up here um no just thank you to my team uh, thank you to everyone at progressive fighting academy thank you to epoch agencies my agent there on like he's on everything aj is unreal um thank you to my sponsor bane frontline towing they are all always awesome they help me out a lot and then a big thank you to unified like for getting me on the on the show and and the contract at Unified, I'm just excited to fight there. And they, you know, I, the Canada's proving ground. So trying to prove what I'm made of. And I, I love that. It's a huge show. Lots of, lots of viewers. And then, yeah, thank you to family, friends, and fans just for, for always supporting and loving MMA. Like, let's, let's go. May 6th. It's going to be an absolute fire show, I can tell. Yeah, it's going to be an incredible card, Unified MMA 44, coming through Calgary, Alberta on May 6th. But if you're not in the immediate area, you can check out Tom O'Connor versus John Wynn on UFC Fight Pass. And yeah, just always appreciate getting to talk to you ahead of these big fights, man. And just really looking forward to peeping it on UFC Fight Pass. I wish I could be in the area for it, but hopefully I'll be out there for some Unified cards real soon. Yeah, some, uh, some of the next ones for sure. Thank you for having me. It was awesome to talk to you again.